Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics, and I'm looking here at a one series. It's a 2010, and it's got some DPF codes. Uh, it's got a symbol on the dash for the DPF, and we'll go inside now, run the diagnostics, and show you what we're looking at. Okay, so we're inside the car. We'll start it up. Got a service warning there, engine management light, and you do get an exhaust symbol come up. When it's driving, I don't know if it's going to come up now or not. No. Right, so we'll get the diagnostic codes up. Okay, so I'm using this new computer here, uh, top down. It's the Phoenix Plus model. So you can see you've got six codes here. So we've got particle filter system, 480A. 481A back pressure signal exhaust temperature sensor. Oh, yeah, no, this one is just because I've unplugged that. I did just unplug that because I was just doing some uh, doing some tests. Because I will show you why. Let me go back. Sorry, go back in here, enter. Still getting the hang of this computer. Continue. read the fault codes now if we go to the data stream yeah. oh no sorry I don't want the want the exhaust system okay so exhaust temperature before the cat exhaust gas temperature before the particle filter and let's see what else have we got here exhaust gas pressure select those so this is a little bit confusing here because you've got the exhaust gas pressure which is on 112 12 is jumping around a bit there on idle exhaust gas temperature before the cat is 209 degrees this one before the particle filter is on minus 40 now if we give it a full acceleration Got about 650 millibars of pressure, which is extreme. So yeah, I said about the fault code for the temperature sensor, which is this one over here, because I did unplug it. Sorry, I don't know if you can see. Just here. So I unplugged that because I was trying to figure out what sensor is what. Now this sensor goes down to the cat down there, but this vehicle, which is a bit, um, a bit confusing there, put that light on, is... It's listing two sensors, but from searching around the car, there's definitely only one fitted on it. So that other sensor is just coming up on the diagnostics um, uh, that it's not fitted to the car there. So this car has got a exhaust back pressure sensor here. This one is for the manifold, and it's got the other one here, which is for the DPF and cat. The DPF and cat are all built into one on this. Okay, I've got the engine running there. Exhaust gas pressure there. Now we're on 160. So I'm going to come down here. As you can see there. I'm going to unplug that. And then the, you can see there the pressure drops off. I'll plug it back in. focus there okay so we're gonna try and get that lower down okay for this one I'm gonna use the winds DPF cleaner and I'm gonna use it in this bottle it's a JLM bottle and I'm gonna use it with this one that's connected to the air compressor the air compressor is there in the van there so I'm gonna bring this over to the car we'll get this put in and hopefully we should see an improvement in the pressure so I had some comments on my last video asking um, was there any reason I bought the JLM bottle but it's just because it's got this cone on the end I think it fits a little bit better on certain cars. 
So when we're connecting to these sort of hoses here, just get that connected on. That just fits in there a little bit tighter than the gun on the launch. It just fits a lot tighter, especially if there's high back pressure like on this one. I found with the launch, um, if there was sort of high pressure, um, when you accelerate the car, this would burst out of the pipe. Uh, so it doesn't hold on very well. Um, I think the launch one is, is more used for just to spray the fluid in while the engine's run, running. But uh, I like to fill the DPF while the, while the engine's off and let it soak for half an hour, really. So I'm going give to give it a go doing this one. So we're going to spray that in now. Just pressing the gun there. I know you can't really hear it, but it is going in. You can see the pipe there jumping around. Try and see if I can get that focused for you. Let's just pump it in there. I've got this set up on the van at the moment here where the um, airline is hooked onto the roof and it's just a retractable cable or a retractable hose, more like. So that's it there, we're all done on that one. She's coming back a little bit. Hopefully not too much. I might have to plug it back up. Let's just plug that back up for a minute because it seems to be coming back a fair bit. So we're going to let that sit for a half an hour. Okay, we're back. We've let it sit for a while there. I'm just going to remove that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen there. It's a bit blurred out. So what I'm going to do is start the car now. I'm not going to connect that back to the pressure sensor temporarily, just in case it pushes any of the fluid back up. So we're going to start the car, and then after a few seconds of running, we can connect the pipe back up. Come back outside and reconnect that. Look at that. That's come off the sensor holes. Okay, let's have a look at the live data there now. Let's get it in a position where we can actually see it. So it's dropped down from about 120 now to 40, but that's still nowhere near where it needs to be. But obviously, it's only been running for 30 seconds or so now. We'll uh, give it some accelerations and hopefully get it down. Full acceleration, we have 200 now. 165 is lowering. One thirty five on full acceleration. Let it go. Let it idle. So really you want this millibars under ten on idle and maximum of eighty ideally on full revs. Fourteen millibars is dropping there. Let's go out to the exhaust and see if we're pushing any foam. Only a slight bit at the moment. I've got the safety gear on. So now we're on idle there. Three to six. I'm gonna give it some full acceleration. So I'll take off the mask there so I can talk to you. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much amazing, the results there. 
um, from the wind's fluid, especially since I've only used one liter, um, which makes that very cost effective for me to use. If I can get away with using one liter to get those results, 750 millibars down to 45, very good results. So there we've got plenty of that left to use on the next car and I think wind should be sponsoring me by now. Pretty sure nobody used to use it before I started using this about five years ago. Um, pretty much going through at the moment about eight bottles of this a week and I uh, can definitely say that the supplier who gets this for me has told me that they haven't, they've sold maybe one bottle in the last year until I started coming there. Now they're selling me eight bottles a week. Um, give or take but yeah you can see there is pr pretty much very good stuff this um, from that results one litre of that has done an amazing job on this vehicle here ok switch the engine off now and it's going to start back up again Let's see what faults we've got and obviously might need to clear these codes so we've got the service warning engine light has managed to just turn itself off which is uh, very rare. You don't usually see that happen. But we're gonna go back. This is the top down uh, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix Plus, I think I've already told you that. As I'm always getting questions, uh, asking what computer I'm using. So I'm gonna go back and we're gonna clear the DTCs. So we're gonna turn the engine off. And ignition on. Clear the DTCs. No DTCs. Now we're going to run the car again and then recheck, rescan it afterwards. Right, let's go back into the ECM. Make sure there's no codes. Continue. Read fault codes. No, no DTCs. So, good result. Just put this kit back in the box. This is the case that this one comes in. Uh, I'll be honest, the case isn't the best. These little clips I can imagine there, they feel a bit flimsy. They're going to break after a few too many uses. So that's it. We are all finished here on this car. We're going to pack up and we'll see you on the next video.